Hello everyone and welcome to this Meet the Speaker video. I'm here today with Asif Ramani. How are you doing, Asif? I'm doing well. Yourself, Vlad? How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. I mean, we're on a Friday at about 2 p.m. here. <laughs> so it's, it's almost that the best time of the week, I say. Just when the weekend starts. It's uh, not Monday for you? That's not the best time? It's uh, Friday? No, you know, Monday at 7 a.m. When you, when you wake up uh -huh. and you're like, oh. Well, it depends. If I go to a SharePoint conference and I get to see you, yeah, it's the best time of the week. Then it's TGIM, right? TGI Monday. <laughs> Otherwise, otherwise TGIF. Gotcha. Yeah, you don't have that many restaurants called TGI Mondays, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they don't have SharePoint to look forward to. That's why. If you have, if everybody had SharePoint to look forward to, there'd be lots of TGIMs. <laughs> That'd be. That's a new trend. You got to start it. First one in Chicago. <laughs> and hopefully open up in Montreal. Sounds good. Let's get the franchise agreement going. Ooh, got to get some legal on that. But <laughs> Anyways, so Asif, for how long have you been working with SharePoint? Yeah, I got dumped with this thing called SharePoint 2002. Uh, I had started my career way before that, but in 2002, as someone told me, hey, we need this SharePoint thingy to work with this uh, federal home loan bank was my first customer for document management or something like that. So it was SharePoint 2001. Wow. That's when I started, 2002. That's when I started playing with it, fighting with it, having fun with it. <laughs> and what were you doing before that? Uh, I was teaching. Uh, so I, well, I taught and I consulted uh, at that time C Sharp before that, uh, classic ASP before that, VB6, VB5, all that good stuff, teaching and consulting. Okay, so you're always a bit on the dev side before SharePoint. That, well, even with SharePoint, I was on dev for a very long time until I saw the light that you don't really need to do it the hard way. There's easier ways of doing it. Yeah, now you're seen as more of the end user guy as like how to do out of the box, really low code solution. <laughs> uh, you've trained hundreds of thousands of people, I, I would say, on how to do stuff with SharePoint out of the box. What made you do the change from hardcore dev to out of the box? What made you see the light, as you say? <laughs> uh, so my kids were born, obviously. I had less time to do what I wanted to do and automatically. And this, this was a time when I was doing a lot of classes, like developer classes, administrative classes back in the day, 2005, 2006. Uh, at that time, I was looking at, you know, these tools are power user tools uh, and thinking to myself, why am I doing all these things the hard way that takes days when I can do it literally sometimes in hours or minutes? And I was teaching these things. And, you know, when you teach somebody, uh, it's like you learn at the same time, right? Yeah. So I learned these things and I'm like, okay, well, my home life needs more time. Here, it just makes sense to do it this way because people change their mind anyway after you develop a solution. Like, oh, can you change this? Can you change? It's much easier to change things when it's no yeah. code. So I made the change. It just made sense. Awesome. And you're still, you're not teaching anymore today, but you've, you've been teaching classes and started doing videos uh, for a few years. Uh, what are you up to now those days? <laughs> you're right that I used to teach lots of classes, and those are four to five day classes. And then from there I went. Uh, well, I, I say a similar time, I was doing a lot of consulting too at that time. Uh, but then I went and changed my audience from uh, power users to end users, like you mentioned. And that happened uh, about five years ago, approximately now, a little bit less. And the reason for that is no matter how many awesome solutions you create, if people are not using it, what's the point? It doesn't matter how difficult it was or easy it was, what's the point? And usage and adoption, governance, all those areas just made a lot more sense to me to focus on. So I just didn't see that much focus coming from folks like us who, who have been doing it, building it for a long time. Uh, I made that change. That's the time also where we started going into, as a company, going into product and uh, started focusing on end user adoption, end user support, governance, getting information to an end user when they need it, where they need it, at the moment of need, so they can be successful. And that's what I focus on now. Awesome. And you're also speaking at a bunch of SharePoint conferences. I mean, I just saw you in Austin a few weeks ago. I saw you in Chicago last month. And I, I, I see you almost everywhere across the globe. And when did you first get started with speaking? 
Oh, that's a good question. Like, 2006, like the third point, not the class part. Right, right. <laughs> so November 2006 was my first speaking engagement. And uh, it, was, <laughs> it was for in SharePoint Connections, I believe, at that time. I was doing SharePoint Connections conferences, advisor live conferences, which are no longer around, both of them. Uh, but, you know, coincidentally, the SharePoint Connections uh, was also run by a company which is now co-running SharePoint Conference with Microsoft. The same company I started with and I'm still doing stuff with. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty exciting, actually. Uh, do you remember what your first ever session was? Oh, my God. Uh, yes, I do, actually. Excel Services. <laughs> Excel Services, November 2006. I did it with uh, another colleague of mine. We did it together. Both okay. of us were fairly amateurish. There was a couple hundred people in the audience. I sort of could recall exactly how the room looked, the kind of questions that were being asked. And I didn't know the answers. I'm like, oh, uh, uh, trying to make, <laughs> trying to give the best answer. But I've been already a trainer before. So I wasn't worried about the questions. You can always say, well, I don't know. Let me find out for you. But a lot of fun. Excel services, 2006. Awesome. And, and you talked about the SharePoint conference. How many SharePoint conferences did you attend? You've been... You've been in doing SharePoint since I was in high school. So did you have the chance to attend all of the big SharePoint conferences, like the ones in Vegas, Anaheim, all of those? Or? Uh, I've been to all of them. I've been to, I mean, as far as the Microsoft-run SharePoint conferences, I have not missed a single one so far. They start with the developer conference back in the day. Uh, and then, of course, it was SharePoint conference. That was Ignite. And now it's SharePoint conference again. And of course, along the way, just like you said, uh, there's been the other conferences, which I won't mention exactly the names, but there's been so many around the world. And it's been a, it's been a blessing. I don't have a count of how many. Uh, I, I should count one, but that'd be pretty cool to have no number. But it's tr truly been a blessing and an honor to be able to present at so many conferences. And out of the Microsoft SharePoint conferences, which one was your favorite? Oh, man. SharePoint Conference 2014. That was my favorite. What, what was so special there? What makes it your favorite? I had a feeling you were going to ask that. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, if I remember correctly, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the last SharePoint conference before Ignite started. Last before the break, yeah? Yeah. So it was like it was going up, 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 and then it was kind of you know, disbanded, and then it became Ignite. Yeah. And no offense to Ignite, but Ignite became a more community conference for SharePoint and Office 365 and Exchange, and Link at that time, and all that. Windows Server, and Windows Client, yeah. and everything. And I've spoken at TechEd before. Uh, back in the day when TechEd was pretty hot, you would go there, but you'd be this small part of the conference. You know, you'd be SharePoint people, and then there's everybody else. And I felt TechEd coming back at Ignite. So I guess the reason to, to answer your question, SharePoint Conference 2014 was my favorite, is because that was the last big SharePoint conference before it went away. So I have that memory, like, oh, man, I, that was pretty awesome. That was, that was a great time. But it's coming back again this year in May, right? Second time now, right? Last year, this year. Yeah, absolutely. I'm super looking forward to it. Very excited. I think uh, you have two sessions there, right, if I remember correctly? Yes, I think you're right. I have two sessions over there this time. Uh, Do you remember what the titles are? Oh, man. <laughs> I should know this thing. Yeah, I don't that's want what happens on Fridays, right? I, we're going to put in the question list. Yeah, and actually I do remember now that I think about it. One is on five steps to user adoption. So five steps to immediate uh, user adoption for SharePoint, but it also covers Office 365 in general too. The second one is a tough one, but I, I always try my best to do it. It's called getting the best use out of all of Office 365 applications. So basically I go through the whole gamut of applications and try to fit things in as to here's how this ties into this one. You might want to use this if you have this scenario. You might not want to use it if this scenario, uh, Teams versus Yammer, Video Portal versus Stream, conversations, you want to have this in Outlook or do you want to have them in Teams and Yammer or conversation board, discussion board. It's a fairly tough session, which I think I'm still getting better and better at, but that's what I'll be presenting. Awesome, and one last question. What's the thing you're most excited about SharePoint Conference coming back to Vegas? By, with SharePoint, it's always been about the community, right? Uh, that's what has excited me. I mean, you look at it, 17 years now I've been in it. 
that's a ridiculous long time when I say that. It's, I mean, I've been married for a little bit more than that. That's it. It's, I feel like I've been married to SharePoint and my wife about the same time. Yeah, so, I, I would buy a bigger gift to the wife than to SharePoint. <laughs> I'm not married, no. but that's what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. But having said that, it's that community aspect, uh, which I feel had kind of got gotten uh, disintegrated, got, kind of got spread out when 2014 conference was done. And last year, that feeling came back with, with the SharePoint conference 2018. Uh, so my hope is that that feeling gets uh, enhanced even more. It gets amplified even more. And when you have the same kind of minded people in a general space, uh, it doesn't even matter what kind of content is being presented. If, when you have the same kind of people in the place and you have this integration a, a, interaction, that's just a beautiful thing. It's very hard to objectify. It's a very subjective thing, but it's a beautiful thing. So I'm very much looking forward to that feeling of all of our community, or at least a big part of it coming together once again, like it used to be in SharePoint conference. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you very much, Asif. Uh, I know you're getting close to the end of the day, so I'll let you go. Uh, thank you very much for your time and looking forward to seeing you in Vegas. It's been my pleasure, Vlad. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. See you there. Bye. Uh, <laughs>